Right then, welcome to topic D on our Physics 2 unit. This one is entitled Fuels for Power. Now this one kind of jumps out all over the place a little bit, so you're just going to have to bear with me, I'm afraid. Uh, the first topic is about being able to evaluate different sources of energy. But what they really mean is evaluating different fuel sources, which is slightly different. So the fuels you need to be able to talk about are fossil fuels, nuclear fuel, and biomass. So fossil fuel would be coal, oil, and gas. Nuclear will be uranium or plutonium. And biomass can be pretty much any waste products. Um, so it could be anything that might have gone to landfill instead. It could be waste food. Pretty much anything, really. Um, so things we need to consider when we evaluate these three fuel sources. Um, how easily available they are. So if they're really available, if there's lots of them, that would be an advantage. If they're not, you could argue it is a disadvantage. So for instance, biomass, we have lots of that. So we could quite easily get hold of some. Uranium, little harder to get hold of. There is quite a lot of it, but we have to process it a bit. So it's, it's not totally difficult to get hold of. And fossil fuels, at the moment, they're quite available but they won't always be. Other topics to think about are how easy they are to extract. So fossil fuels are getting harder to extract as there's fewer of them. Nuclear uh, fuels, so uranium and plutonium, it's quite easy to dig the raw rock out of the ground. But as I said earlier, we have to process them, which is a little bit more difficult. Um, biomass requires people to separate their rubbish. So that can be a little bit difficult to start with, but gets easier over, t over time, sorry. Environmental impact. So fossil fuels, we know re uh, release carbon dioxide, which is a greenhouse gas. Biomass will do exactly the same. And nuclear fuels are actually pollution free. So they, on environmental impact, as long as the nuclear plant is working properly, they are the best in terms of environmental impact. So risk. Fossil fuels, there is a bit of risk associated with putting money into doing these because they are going to run out eventually. So you're running the risk that they're going to get more expensive and that you may not be able to use them forever. Nuclear power, the risk involved here is if something goes wrong. So uh, what happened in Fukushima during the uh, monsoon, the um, sorry, the tsunami, um, has led to an awful lot of problems. But nuclear power, if it's working well, is very, very safe. It's just in an extreme case, it can have a big impact on the environment, on people who are living nearby. So there is a bit of risk involved with nuclear power stations. And then with biomass, um, there isn't really that much risk, they're going to keep going. Um, you are releasing gases which can be explosive, so you do have to manage that properly. So there's a small amount of risk associated with that, but we should be able to keep producing them for a long time. And finally, cost. Um, now these are all pretty changeable, so with cost they would probably give you some numbers. You just really be, need to be able to talk about these ideas and be able to say something on all of them. For most of them, they would give you information you would then have to pull it out and talk about these sorts of topics. Okay, that's the first topic. You could almost consider this a separate one now. This is the bit where they decide they're going to make you do some calculations. So don't panic, don't go running for the hills, they're not that bad. You just have to sort of bear with them. So they're all about power. Now power is measured in watts, so that's its unit, it's a capital W. And power is telling us how much energy a device uses in one second. So if something's got a 100 watt rating, that means that every second it uses 100 joules of energy. And that's all it is. It's just how much energy per second that that device uses. Now, we need to be able to calculate power. Now, if you're asked to calculate the power of an electrical device, you would be given its voltage, which would be in volts, and its current, which would be in amps. And at the beginning of your exam paper, you will be given this equation, and it will say power equals voltage times current. So all you need to do is pick out the numbers and put them into that equation. 
which isn't too bad really. The hard bit comes when they might give you power and voltage and ask you to calculate current. In which case, you're going to use the same equation, but you have to rearrange it first. So the two ways we can rearrange this equation are voltage equals power divided by current. So in that case, all I've done is I've taken the times current bit that's here, and I've done the opposite of times in by current, and I've divided by current. So it gets rid of it on this side, and it puts it on the bottom over here. And the other option is current is power divided by voltage, where this time I've moved the times voltage to the other side. I've done the opposite. I've divided by voltage, which makes it disappear from the right and appear on the bottom on the left. So that's the first equation. The second equation we need is energy equals power times time. Now this just comes from the definition of power, because if I remember, if you remember, I told you that power equals the amount of energy per second. Now the word per means divide by. So in a second, when I rearrange this, you'll see that power equals energy divided by time. Now the energy will always be in joules, which is nice and easy, but the time it needs to be in seconds. Now they might give it to you in minutes or hours, and what you have to remember to do is change it to seconds to put it in the equation. So let's just look at the rearrangements. So like I said, I can do power equals energy divided by time, because I've taken times time and done the opposite. And if I want to get time, I take times power and do the opposite and put that on the other side. Okay, so let's just have a think about how we deal with these calculation questions, because they're the thing that people often panic about. And you don't need to. You just need to get really calm and think they're only numbers. So, when you're doing these questions, you need to look for the numbers that are in the question, then find which equation to put them in. Once you've decided which equation you need to use, you then might need to rearrange the equation so it's in the right order. So I'm going to give you an example of the way I do these. So this is a question that could be on an exam paper. So it says, what's the power rating of a kettle working at 9 amps on a main supply of 230 volts? So the first thing I'll do is I'll go through and I'll underline some important words. Now the first one to me is power, because it's asked me what is the power. Then told me 9 amps and 230 volts. So I've got power, I've got amps, which is current, and I've got 230 volts, which is voltage. Now if I go back and look at the equations I've been given, I'll find that power equals the current times the voltage. So that's the equation I'm going to use because it's got all three things I've been given. So I then just put my numbers in. So I've got 9 amps, which is times 230 volts. Then all you have to do is go grab your calculator, plug your numbers in, and you should come out with 2,070 watts. So when you get these calculation questions, don't panic. Just look for the key words then look for the equation that has the things you've been given in it. There'll always be three. So look for which equation's got the three in it. Write it down. Then put your numbers in. Then grab your calculator. And make sure you show every step of what you're doing. Because if you make a mistake, so if, for instance, you use your calculator wrong and you got to, or you read what was on your calculator wrong, and instead of um, 2,070, you accidentally wrote um, 7,070. Now, if you'd shown you're working, the examiner can still give you one of the two marks because you were trying to do the right thing, even though you got the wrong answer. But if you had just written down that, if you'd just written down the number that you thought was on your calculator, you just get it wrong and you don't get any marks. So always, always show you're working. Okay, it's at this point you're going to get grumpy with me because they introduce what is a really horrible, horrible unit. And you can blame the power companies because it's how they charge you for electricity. Now, the unit we need to know is called the kilowatt hour. So if you remember, kilo was one of the prefixes we met earlier, and it means times a thousand. Okay? So it means that whatever your number is, it's an amount of watts, but you need to put three zeros on the end to get it in watts. So if it was one kilowatt, that is the same as one thousand watts. And you need, might need to go both ways. So it might tell you how many watts you've got 
and you need to convert it to kilowatts. Now, the other thing about this is that it's hours as well. Now, normally we use seconds, but in this case, it wants hours. So, just to define the kilowatt for you then. One kilowatt hour is the amount of energy transferred by a one kilowatt device in one hour. Uh, it's handy to try and remember that equation, that definition, sorry, because they often ask for it. So if I want to calculate the number of kilowatt hours, what I need to do is, if I've been given the number of watts, I take the number of watts, I divide it by a thousand, and I multiply by the number of hours. If they gave you the number of kilowatts, that's easy, because it's just the number of kilowatts times the number of hours. So if you just look at the unit, or what it's called, it's kilowatt hours. And they're next to each other. Kilowatts are next to hours, so you're going to multiply them. Okay, so if you look at the unit, kilowatts next to hours, so we multiply them. Okay, so that's the kilowatt hour. Now what it's used for is to charge you for your electricity. So if you're asked how much it costs to use a device, what you need to know is how many kilowatt hours were used. Oh, I've been very naughty there. That should say the number of kilowatt hours, we'll just correct it, number of kilowatt hours times by the cost per kilowatt hour. See, I made the mistake that everyone makes when they answer these questions. I forgot it should be kilowatt hours. So learn from my mistake and don't make it yourselves. So when we're looking for the cost of electricity, we do the number of kilowatt hours times the cost per kilowatt hour. Now this cost per kilowatt hour, they will always give you. And the number of kilowatt hours, they might have asked you to calculate it in the question before, or they might give it to you. So just make sure, if you do one calculation, so if the first one asked you to calculate the number of kilowatt hours, so part A asked for number of kilowatt hours, and part B asked you to then calculate the cost. If you can't do part A, make up a nice number. So decide it's going to be 10 kilowatt hours, because then you can use 10 times 7.2 if that's the cost per kilowatt hours so you can come up with an answer in the second part. So if you don't know how to do the first part and you need it for the second just make up a number. Right that's the end of the second section of this very strange unit. The last bit is the national grid and it's very very quick I promise. So the national grid is just a series of transformers and pylons and wires that let us transfer electricity across the country. Now we just need to know a little bit about the transformers. Transformers can change the voltage of electricity. Now, we use transformers in the national grid to step up the voltage. It's the proper name, I promise. Step up the voltage into the grid to 40,000 volts. So when it's travelling through those wires on the pylons, it's at 40,000 volts. The transformers then step down the voltage into our homes to get it to 230 volts. So, why 40,000 volts? Well, it's because we have less energy loss, which makes it cheaper, which makes the electricity cheaper. And for the higher paper, you need to know that using a high voltage means low current. And the current is what causes wires to get hot, so a low current means less heating, which means we lose less energy, which makes it cheaper, which makes the electricity cheaper. And finally, why 230 volts? Well, it's simply because it's a safe voltage. If you get a voltage of 230 across you, it won't kill you. That's pretty much the reason we picked it. Okay, so that is it for this unit. Don't get panicked about all the equations, or because it's a long video, it's just because I took my time over the equations. You can do it, I believe in you, okay? Just remember to take it one step at a time with those equations. All right, so remember, if you've got any questions, do not hesitate to ask me.